Every year, 6% of Bahamian children are born with a heart defect. We at Cable 12. And the NASA Guardian decided, decided to lend a helping hand in creating more, more awareness, awareness to the cause of saving little hearts. One surgery can cost up to $250,000. We at Cable 12. And the NASA Guardian hear their cry. We are asking you to make a donation to these efforts. Embrace the opportunity. And save a little heart. A 35-year-old woman allegedly takes her own life. What her family is saying tonight. A top government advisor talks value-added tax. The teachers' union wants a public school principal gone. Plus, find out why these activists are dancing in Rawson Square. Good evening, I'm Vonnie Tude and MB12 The Weekend Edition starts now. Top in news, coroner Linda Virgil is leading the investigation into the death of a 35-year-old woman at her family's Fox Hill home last night. The victim's grieving parents met with the coroner today, hours after she allegedly took her own life. Christina McNeil was there as they discussed her last moment and recalled the woman she was. A family left grieving after 35-year-old Shante Gibson was discovered dead in the family home, an apparent suicide that has her father in shock. Shante's father, Anthony Gibson, says he was at a basketball game with his wife when he got the call that something tragic had happened to Shante at the family's Reeves Street home. Her step-grandmother uh, didn't see her during the evening, so she sent someone to look for her to give her something to eat. And uh, they went to the room and said something happened to Shante. Uh, we must come and find out what happened to Shante. And I was at a basketball game, uh, me, my wife, and son. And we, well, after the game, we just had to run quickly to come and see what happened. And uh, when we got there, we discovered that she was in the room. According to police, Shanti was reportedly discovered hanging from a rope inside the home. Gibson says the family is still in shock after last night's discovery. The family met this afternoon with coroner Linda Virgil. Today, Gibson recalled Shanti's jovial attitude just days before the said incident. He said it was completely unexpected. The family is okay. Uh, everybody coping with it and uh, shock uh, because... It's something unheard of, you know, and uh, it's just a surprise. The last time we would have spoke, she was in her jovial mood and uh, happy, and she said uh, everything is okay, because I did ask her, how's everything? She said, everything is okay, Daddy. She's all right. Gibson says his eldest daughter was not married and did not have any children. She did clerical work but was unemployed at the time of her death. Gibson, with his quiet demeanor, reminded all parents to keep a close eye on their children for any sign that may indicate they are in need of help. Continue to love your children, uh, love your family members, uh, keep check on them uh, daily and uh, see if you can get into their heads and make sure everything is okay. Uh, the bigger picture that uh, we need to realize that God, God is uh, in the midst of everything, and uh, He takes care of everything. He has a plan, not us, and we have to go with His plan. As rough as it might seem, uh, we cannot change what His plans are as much as we might want to or think that we can prevent it. The Gibson family has now begun its coping and healing process as the coroner's investigation picks up from here. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Eight Dominicans are behind bars and their vessels have been confiscated after they were caught poaching in Bahamian waters. They were arrested near Mayaguana around 10 Friday morning. According to reports, Mayaguana residents and the island's administrator assisted police in taking the eight foreign nationals into custody. Police confiscated four boats, fishing apparatus and shellfish. Poaching in Bahamian waters, particularly by Dominicans, has been a long-standing issue for local fishermen. 
The Prime Minister's recent announcement that a new tax structure would be implemented in 2014 has sparked concern among many Bahamians who are questioning how another tax will affect their pockets. Paige McCartney sat down with financial expert and former state minister for finance James Smith, who explains what a value-added tax system would actually mean for consumers. The Bahamas tax system is based mainly on import duties right now, and a value-added tax system would mean that in addition to taxes on goods that Bahamians already experience, they would also experience taxes on services. But according to Smith, that would mean less of a burden on lower income Bahamians. Bahamas is a service economy in the sense that about 80% of our output is actually services. So from a purely revenue standpoint, we are taxing the smaller part of the economy, which would be the importation of goods rather than the uh, production of services or even both. According to Smith, a number of economic studies have shown that lower income households spend the bulk of their income on goods versus services, and therefore a VAT system would even the playing field. Because the low income household has to meet basic requirements of um, food, clothing, shelter, which takes up a lot of the income. A higher income household would do other things like go to the movies, to the theater, etc., and those things are... Um, those services are really not taxed. So from just a point of view of our equity, we are permitting our low-income households to bear the proportionately a larger burden of the taxation. But what does this all mean for you, the consumer? The proposal by the government is for a value-added tax of 15 percent. But the government is also proposing that with VAT's implementation, there would be a reduction in import tariffs. Therefore, Smith said the public will be no worse off. The VAT in the Bahamas would, um, could very well um, uh, be implemented in a shorter space of time for the simple reason we don't have a very large um, manufacturing base where you see the intermediate production. That means with, with a VAT um, you tax in different stages of the production process and we don't have a very broad manufacturing base. So our VAT is going to be essentially a sales tax one that applies on goods and services. So implementation time should be um, somewhat shorter than in other countries. Smith said the Bahamas is not reinventing the wheel with the proposal of implementing a VAT system. It's used in at least 150 countries around the world. In fact, he said the Bahamas has been considering value-added taxation since 1984 and took action toward implementation in the first Christie administration when the government invited studies from the IMF and traveled to Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados to examine how the system works in those regional countries. Furthermore, Smith said the Bahamas is a bit late with this new system and should have implemented VATs a long time ago. He suggested that it would have made it easier for the Bahamas to make it through the global financial recession. During the recession, uh, you'll find that um, there's always a sharp decrease in imports um, simply because um, unemployment goes up, um, visitor arrivals go down, and the customs tax is not, uh, what they say, buoyant enough like to, to keep steady even though the economy is shrinking. They rise and fall with the economy. Smith said the proposed VAT system is a logical move for the Bahamas that seeks to broaden the taxation base and lower current import duty rates. Reporting for MB12, I'm Paige McCartney. Still to come, the former prison superintendent discusses his diplomatic appointment. That story and more when MB12 Weekend returns.